right, I thought I would do a two-year update on my uh, plywood lumberyard skiff. I live in South Florida, and the first year I thought I had prepped the boat well enough, and I let it sit out in the weather. And it's just it's South Florida in wood. It doesn't go well. Uh, I think it would have been better had I not glassed the outside of the hull. Uh, when I was building the boat, I'd actually said I wished I had not glassed it. Uh, for one, it would save a tremendous amount of work and about $300 in materials. Uh, I think what happens is that even though I left the inside exposed as wood and painted, it's just not letting the water evaporate out of it quick enough. Uh, it's been stuffed, <coughs> sucked into the plywood, and I think I had done such a good job of sealing the plywood that it just didn't really breathe. Uh, I pulled the 2x8 butt joint out of here yesterday and that plywood underneath there was all damp and this boat has now been under a cover for 13 months so the first 12 months it lived outside and since last November uh, it's been living under this shelter which is actually really good the air moves through it it keeps the rain and sun out of it uh, I think all my damage started when I was exposed to the weather uh, right down in here Along this inside chine is where I first noticed rust about 14 or 15, uh, rust, uh, rot about 14 or 15 months ago. And I went ahead and I chased it a little bit, but I didn't chase it far enough. And because of my lack of uh, serious effort and letting the boat sit while I wasn't using it, uh, I rotted out the bottom of the floor. Uh, the chine itself had a fair amount of rot in it, but was saved. Uh, I have a small piece of the hull that I had to replace, and then I put a butt joint over that. So, I mean, structurally, it's nice and strong again. Uh, I had about a five foot by one foot piece of uh, three quarter inch ply, and then I had some wet wood in there, right just maybe within the first few inches. So, I dried all that out, treated it for rot, filled it with epoxy, and then put a big doubler over it. And that's where I normally stand, so that's fine. Uh, when I thought the project was about done, I started looking around the boat and really poking and prodding. Uh, the 4x4 posts there in the corner uh, had started to rot, and also the uh, piece of flooring right underneath it. Luckily, it did not get into anything else over there, so that's all been cleaned up and dried. Uh, that little bit of post on the bottom is not a big deal. Uh, this ended up being a mess up here. Uh, it wasn't really even exposed. I mean that you could see it. Uh, it was when I started beating around with the hammer I started finding areas where that's the problem with the paint. The paint covers a rot. So to get it at, <clears throat> get at it all I cut the outside panel out there because it had started up into the uh, side of the boat. And of course this uh, chine in there is garbage. It's just all soft and it it's soft right back to that splice. Then on the other side of the splice, which is right there, that piece is fine. And I think that's, there's a piece of wood, and I don't know why. I don't exactly remember what I cut those from and then spliced them together. But, I mean, it's construction timber, but that piece of timber is just, and I think part of it is spliced in over here. And that's why I had the issue back in here. But, you know, it's just a matter of chasing it all out now and letting it dry, and I'll come back and put a new butt joint in there and splice a piece into the bottom and wrap some glass around the corners and put that chine. That chine I'm going to cut out today right back there and then I'll just rebuild it in pieces so I can get a nice bend to the hull shape because I'll maintain the hull shape there. So that's the main thing. Uh, I've grabbed that thing and there's and move it around so it's really not affecting the, the shape of the boat. It's all pretty much in these panels all being put together. So I'll cut that out today, uh, let it dry for a while, and, and put it back. But yeah, the, the outdoor experience for the plywood boat in South Florida did, did not fare well. Like I say, I had taken precautions in painting it uh, really well. I had treated all the woods. I had one small area of rot here, too, I dug out. But I'll be able to come in with filler in that because this is actually an inch and a half thick right there. Uh, I really think keeping it under a, a shelter like this is, is really a trick that I shouldn't have too much issues after this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and peel back all the paint on this plywood floor. 
and just let that wood breathe and uh, get it really dried out before I cover it again. I'm afraid it's just had water that sort of soaked into the wood and it's never really evaporated out through the paint, though they said that's supposed to happen. But we had plywood boats growing up and none of them had fiberglass on them. And they, had, they were old, they'd been up on the lakes for years. So I think if I was ever to do this again, I would definitely leave the plywood exposed on the outside of the boat and just paint it. Yeah, I'd go ahead where my butt joints are, and I did that on this boat. Okay, my butt joints are here. I've laid structural cloth over the seam. Uh, I think that's a good idea, and then you could just fare that into the plywood. You know, and you'd have two of them. You'd have one back there and one here, and just fare it right into the plywood and prime and paint it. And I think I would probably put uh, tape on the corners. Okay, I'd go ahead and tape those with glass. Uh, it's a structural area, plus it would, for any leaks or anything like that. So I think that would be as far as I would do with glass. So, anyway, the joys of wooden boat ownership. I've had a lot of different boats in the years. I should know better with wood, but they're not, this thing is nice and light. Uh, it tows beautifully behind my uh, Continental. I used to tow it with a caddy, now I'm towing, towing it with a Continental. And for a 20 foot boat with this much space in it, so I'll be uh, offshore fishing by after the first of the year.